Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another week of the Retro Gamers. You're sticking with us through 54, well, now, 54 episodes. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Larry here. And Anthony here. What's going on, Ant? Finally, in the, t- in the same time zone, for now. Yes, yes, uh, right. When I, when I said Anthony here, actually, when I entered this, I was actually going to end that with a question, like oh. Anthony here, <laughs> because I, I've... I've, you know, as usual, I don't know where I am. <laughs> where in the world is Anthony? <laughs> That's it, just we get, Anthony. We got to get Rockapella. I'm sure we can get him on the cheap. Yeah, I, yeah, I was just gonna say, I'm sure. Yeah, you know what? I may have twenty bucks in my wallet. <laughs> <No apologies. laughs> oh man! Oh my gosh! Hello from Orlando, Florida. Oh, Orlando, nice. All right. Well, at least you're in Florida. Very good. Home yeah, of Disney. I'm, yes, I'm. I'm in Florida. Good. In, in August. Well, yeah, that's. Oof. That's rough. On a weekend. <laughs> That's rough. That's like being in Vegas during the summer. No, thank you. No, uh, you know what? I was in Vegas uh, at the end of June, and it was 115 degrees. Oh, but a dry 115, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay, uh, whatever. I, here it's like 90 something degrees, and it's about 100 percent humidity. <laughs> um, needless to say, I have not stepped out of the hotel all day. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Whether 95 or 115, humidity or dry, it's still hot as hell. <laughs> yes, and the only reason why I had to step out of the hotel at all this weekend is because the um, the plug for my um, my uh, my MacBook died. Oh so no! I had to go, so I had to go to Best Buy and get a new one. <laughs> oh so, gosh! Uh, yeah, some somebody somebody at the uh, office here was nice enough to drive me Friday night on the way to the hotel, oh, and I bought one. Got here, tried to plug in my laptop, and I bought the wrong one. Oh no! <laughs> So Boo. then I had to go. So then yesterday morning I had to Uber over to Best Buy <laughs> <laughs> oh, and man. Make, it, make the exchange. And then I decided, oh, I was like, there's a mall right down the way. Let me walk across. It's like it was like a 10 minute walk across. Yeah. By the time I got to the mall, probably... I was drenched. <laughs> I didn't even walk around the mall. I called an Uber. I went back to the hotel. <laughs> you, bo- you, you bought an Uber to go around the mall. Then you got sent home. That's basically I was like, OK, so this is the mall. I'm calling an Uber. I'm done. <laughs> Dunsky. And I have not left the hotel since. <laughs> well, good stuff. Well, they got some nice hotels down there. So, all yes, right. they do. Well, did you bring anything with you to keep you entertained? As, I mean, you know, it's any video game equipment that... I did, actually. Um, my, my, my Nintendo Switch is with me. Very good, very good. Uh, so I can continue playing Breath of the Wild. Oh, and by the way, um, I have officially beaten Breath of the Wild. Ah, so very nice. Um, although I got the short ending, oh. um, there, there are two endings. There's a short ending and a full ending. So I got the short ending. Um, n- and then I realized what I did not complete to get the full ending. So now I've completed that. And then, um, I haven't done the full ending yet. Cause I want to, pl- I actually want to play it on my TV, like my big screen you. TV, not on, my little, not on the handheld. And even though we are retro gamers, we're still gamers, uh, we're still gamers. So at, at some point. Hopefully this month. I know um, we have a special retro game live stream for this month, but mm-hmm. at some point this month, I will be live streaming the end of oh, wow. Legends of the Wild. All right, cool, cool. Yeah, the the we uh, as Anthony mentioned, we are teaming up with Victims and Villains uh, each month. We're going to do a theme every Wednesday. So the themed streams are Wednesdays, but every once in a while, you may see us hop on every now and again at randomly uh, to play any game. Really, in all honesty. Uh, but uh, this month is wrestling, uh, and Josh actually played. He really pulled one out of the bag. He's been pretty good with that. Uh, the yes. Simpsons wrestling, which was uh, a terrible, absolutely terrible game, but uh, fun to watch. Yeah, it was. It was actually kind of cool. I, I don't remember. I think I was in the airport when I watched it, and I just started <laughs> laughing. Yeah. Um, so that that was actually, yeah, that was a nice little surprise because, you know, you would think we would go, you know, for WWE. wrestling. We'd go with the yeah. Stand, yeah, we'd go with the standards. WWF games from you know retro land, yep, yep. Um, but that was cool. That was yeah. cool to see Simpsons wrestling, and you know um, I know you're up next. Uh, yeah, Wednesday, and I'm debating. I'm trying to figure out what to play. Um, it's going to be old. I'll tell you that much. It's definitely going to be NES era. Um, nice. Well, you know what? I may. Well, you got a, you got a, you got a few games there. No, I you know got, you're right. You got you got you got Tecmo World Wrestling. You got Pro yeah. Wrestling. You got WrestleMania, Wrestling Challenge, King well, of the Ring, here's WCW. The, here's the problem: some of those I don't have a system for, so that's going to be the 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 decision maker. Unless I can borrow one, uh-huh. um, because I haven't bought one yet. Uh, but yes, I do have the Famicom games. I'm thinking about maybe 
a certain Super Nintendo game that I'm thinking about uh, that I okay. can get on the emulator, emulator on the virtual console. So we'll see. Uh, that will be uh, I'll be broadcasting Wednesday. What is that? The tenth. Um, Wednesday is the 9th, I believe. All right. Well, yes, it is. Uh, so this Wednesday, the 9th, tomorrow when this drops, uh, yep. I'll be broadcasting at about 8 o'clock. And now that I think about it, ugh, that means i got to talk to Frank now about the better half. But whatever, I'll deal with that off air. <laughs> we usually broadcast. <laughs> well, and, uh, and then I will go on the 16th, although I will tell you right now, um, I will probably be... Um, playing streaming my game on thursday the 17th okay you did that last time <laughs> well i you know I, I realized the 16th i have a work event i, I have a work event i have to go to yeah, so fair enough well listen, uh, that's... it's it's yeah it's either going to be thursday thursday the 17th or maybe even friday the 18th unfortunately <laughs> i can't i can't necessarily i can't i would love to commit to a wednesday I was like, but I am at the mercy of my work schedule. I don't blame you. Maybe, uh, maybe this whole Wednesday thing may not work out. So we'll see. We'll talk to Josh about that. <laughs> well, you know what? I mean, it, it could just be like the week of, and then true. we'll make we we can make announcements and Very whatnot. True. So Very I'm true. just I'm just putting it out there ahead of time. Right. When my Wednesday will not work. <laughs> so, <laughs> All righty then. There you go, Anthony. Not conforming to uh, to our schedule, but that's okay. Nor should I. <laughs> So, but, um, but, but yeah, it, so I, I was saying I got my switch with me and, uh, um, I've been, I've been, uh, binging some game of Thrones because I finally gave in and started watching oh, that did show. You? I'm not even yeah. going to bother with that yet. Yeah. No, you know what? They're on season seven. I just finished season one right now and I'll get there. <laughs> uh, I'll get there. Um, and then of course, you know what I did not bring with me, which, which I know you are alluding to. Yeah, that's what I'm trying um, to get to. I know, yes, I know where you're going. Um, I did not bring my brand new, <laughs> finally found after nine months. <laughs> Just about, yep. Just about nine months. I have my NES Classic. All right, there oh. we go, finally. Yeah, that didn't take long at all. The, the saga has ended, folks. I Anthony know. has his NES classic. Holy you know, it's cow. it's t- it's taken me less time to finish like Final Fantasy games than it did to find <laughs> this system, and but, and the story behind it, I think, is 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 equally as uh, as fun. Oh, the story is awesome. Um, <laughs> I love. The, I, I and this is my first. I think this will be my first time telling the story in 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 completion. Oh, absolutely. So, because this all before we start. This all literally happened like what an hour and a half after we recorded last week's episode. Yeah, basically. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So we recorded we recorded um, last week's episode, and then um, I I hung up because I had to go to work because I have on, on top of my regular day job I do these various side jobs. Don't ask me why. <laughs> um, you know, because I because I you know clearly you don't, don't have you don't like free to time. rest. Yes, no, I don't like to sit still. I'm very antsy. <laughs> um, so so we we finished recording. I jumped in my car. Went and was started driving to um, to my job because I um, on occasion I host a local scavenger hunt in L.A. Um, with this company cool. and they you know they they asked me if I wanted to work that Saturday and I was like hey I go it's like the first Saturday I've been home in forever should I just stay home and do nothing or should I go work and of course I you know made the wrong decision <laughs> so I went to work um, so then I um, yeah so then I'm in my car I'm on my way to the starting line for the scavenger hunt so I can go set everything up. And I get a text. And, you know, don't text and drive, people. Just telling you right now. Nope, nope. Um, no texting and driving. I was I, – I did happen to be at a stoplight, and I have one of those little cradles <laughs> in my car. Sure. My fa- <laughs> I did. <laughs> I believe I did. you. Of all, trust me. Of all people, you will yeah. have that, yes. Yeah, so, you know, so I, I, had my little, I had my little cradle with my phone in it, and I get a text, and I'm sitting at a stoplight, and I'm like, okay, so I was like, I just, you know, press the button to look at it, and there sitting, sitting there is, you know, a picture of the NES Classic, and a friend of mine who does not play video games at all. Wow, okay. Nothing to do, yep, my friend, my friend Diana, um, who, who, you know, I am forever in her debt, <laughs> um, forever in her debt. So um, she texts me a picture of the NES Classic, and she said – and she just wrote, hey, are you still looking for one of these? <laughs> very very casual. <laughs> now, I'm sitting at a stoplight, and I'm not supposed to be texting, so of course I'm right, you know. So then yeah. I'm like really quickly writing, you know, holy crap, yes. Yeah. <laughs> where, where, you know, where is this? Where is this? She's like, oh, she's like, 
I just got a text from the Amazon treasure truck. And I'm like, and I'm like, what the hell is it? Well, I didn't even ask her. I didn't even ask her to that part. I was like, um, I just got a text from the Amazon treasure truck that they have, they have it available, but you have to pick it up today. Do you want it? And I said, you know, of course, oh my God, yes. Order it, order it, order it. Green light. <laughs> so I'm driving. And she's like, well, you can order it. And of course, I'm, 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 now, I'm, now I'm doing like, uh, what do you call it? Voice command? Voice oh, okay, text. yeah, yeah. So now, because I'm driving, so I'm just hitting the voice button. I'm like, I can't do it when I'm driving. I go, please order it right now before it's <laughs> So anyway, she, um, so then she's like, okay, cool, no problem. So then, um, so then she orders it, and she's like, okay, here's the, here's the order number. Here's the QR code. You just have to go down. You have to go down to wherever the treasure truck is. And I'm like, fine. So no problem. So then I get, then, then, I, then I hit a road closure. While I'm driving and I'm like, so now I'm like, okay, now I hit a road closure and I'm like, I call my boss and I'm like, cause he's meeting me at the starting line. Cause it was a lar it was a really large race on that Saturday. Oh, I think really? we had like, we had like 60 people. Oh yeah. Yeah. So, so he's like, oh, I'll meet you at the starting line. So then I call him and I'm like, I just hit a bunch of roadblocks. I'm like, there's a lot of heavy traffic here. I'm going to be a few minutes late, whatever. And then as I'm sitting there, not moving, I'm like, Hmm. I wonder if I can still get one for my sense. <laughs> so then, so then I click the Greedy. Leash greedy so, you went from hey, none to trying to get two hey you know what people are already putting their snes pre-orders <laughs> they're putting their classic pre-orders up on ebay you mean the so ones whatever. that got canceled okay yes the ones that got canceled people are putting their pre-orders up on that on ebay so you know what whatever <laughs> I, I was like this was going to be the last opportunity probably to ever get your hands on any of these honestly, whatsoever honestly uh, and especially after the think geek um oh. thing happened the week prior when you're done you know, we'll, i have we'll talk, which, yeah which we'll talk about yep um, so, so I'm sitting, you know, so I'm sitting in traffic that's not moving and I'm like, okay, let me click on it, click on it. Um, I'm like, all right, let me go through the order process. But at this point though, I was like, it has to be sold out. I was like, cause you know, maybe it was like 10 or 15 minutes after she texted me mm -hmm. that she got one. So I'm like, there aren't going to be any more cause these things sell out in seconds. Um, so I sit there, click the thing. Sure. Sure enough. I go, they were still available. I was like, holy wow. crap. I was like, so I went through the whole process, ordered it, got a QR code. So now I've got two. I had two NES classics in my hands. Wow. Um, all I had to do was go pick it up. So now, I, and of course, I have no idea what this Amazon treasure truck is. I was going to say, yeah, like, can you explain what this thing is? Yeah. So, so, um, so what happened, here's, here's how, I'll explain it in a second. Okay. So I went to, um, I went to work. I did the starting line for the scavenger hunt. And what <laughs> Race that go. It, yeah, basically, <laughs> so what happens at the scavenger hunt is, all the teams show up, I do a little starting line speech, and I send them off, and then I have to meet them at the finish line, but it usually takes them like three or four hours to get there. So I was like, so right after I send them off, I'm like, okay, now I have to go to the Grove to go pick up the NES Classic, because you had to pick it up that day before the truck left. Oh, jeez. So it's like basically like uh, so basically the truck was there from eleven to five. So what the Amazon okay so the Amazon Treasure Truck is this new thing that Amazon is doing, and what it is is it's a literal truck it's mm -hmm. kind of like uh you know i i want to say like um it's not like a truck truck like a big yeah. semi truck it's like maybe like you know what the what a small u-haul maybe would be okay maybe, okay not even that big so about that size kind of truck mm -hmm. and it's like you know it's all it's all designed it's got a nice like logo on it that says amazon treasure truck and everything like that so um the amazon treasure truck was going to be at the grove in la um, and the Grove is like one of those big outdoor mall experiences. Larry, I don't know if you went there when you came to visit, but um, I don't know. It, it, did, did I take you to the Americana by me in Glendale or whatever it was? It's like big, big outdoor like shopping mall with a big water fountain and all kinds uh, of. I would remember that. The only thing I remember is like the LA Experience, which was yeah, there uh, so during. Yeah, it's basically this big outdoor. It's it's a big outdoor like pretty high-end mall like it's got a lot of those like higher end stores and mm -hmm. and restaurants and then it's got um and then it's got condos that you can lease or live in wow. about yeah so it's this whole big complex huh. um and then the grove in la you know ha also has a farmer's market attached to okay. it very famous farmer's market so what happened was the truck the truck was situated inside the grove so, like, in, you know, in the outdoor area, there's, like, this whole grassy knoll and everything like that. So it was parked on the grass. So I get – Yeah, so I grassy get, knolls. Right. So I get to, so I get to the Grove. I get to the Grove, 
And, you know, and they have the truck there. I think it was like blue. It was like blue with like a red outline and had a nice logo and everything. That's a big ass truck. Um, and then like and it's like they're just basically it's almost like they're having a party. It's like they have music blasting wow. and they have like all these employees there and they have those like white tents okay. with with tables with uh, just folding tables underneath it. So I go to walk up, and here I am. I'm basically rushing because I'm like, oh, God, I go, I have to pick up the NES Classic, and then I have to get back to the finish line before any of the teams get to the finish line. Otherwise, I'm screwed <laughs> work-wise. So, so, I get, so I get to the truck, and then sitting on these folding tables. Now, I had gotten there. The, the truck had opened officially at 11 o'clock. And the thing about the Amazon Treasure Truck is that, um, like I said, it's a fairly new thing. They only carry one item one specific item oh. that day and then basically if you sign up for if you sign up for the treasure truck um like email blast yeah, or yeah. text blast or whatever whenever the treasure truck is in town they'll text you and say the treasure truck is in town it's going to be at this location and this is the item we have and the idea is the item that they have is a hard to get item which is why they had the nes classic so the only thing they had in the truck was nes classics the only thing available for that day wow. was the NES classic so and that's what my friend got the the, the notice for yeah so so I, I signed up for the treasure truck also mm-hmm. uh, because I'm like, hey, you know what? You never know what else they're going to have in yeah, the future. Right? True. Like, you know, the SNES classic if I don't get it. <laughs> um, and so I walk up to the table and there's probably like four or five long, you know, those long white folding tables. Yeah. Yeah. Four or five long white folding tables. And each table's got a, you know – an Amazon treasure truck bag. They have like you know their own shopping bags. Each shopping bag had an NES classic in it. They must have had even when I got there. Like this was an hour after they were there. There looked like there were at least two or three hundred there. Okay, and this is what I'm going to talk about when you're done with your story because so, I have an issue yeah. about that. But go ahead. Okay. So walk up, and you know. I walk literally right up. There's no line or anything because it's all pre-order and you mm-hmm. just walk up. They scan your QR code and you take your classic home. So walk up to the guy and he's like, yeah. He's like, how did you How did you find out about us? I told him this whole story. He's like, oh, man. He's like, that's great. He clearly knew nothing about video games because <laughs> <laughs> I started talking a little bit about video games yeah. and all he was interested in was – Oh, how did you hear about the treasure truck? Yeah. The treasure truck is cool. And I was, that. I was like, I was like, well, yeah, I think it's cool. I go, I've been trying to get this thing for like nine months. <laughs> and then, you know, so then um, I walked away with two NES wow. classics in my hands in wow. the treasure truck bags. Um, and then, um, yeah, that was it. I was just really happy. And before anybody asks, the other classic that I have is not going on eBay. I am not selling it for $300. <laughs> I have a very good friend of mine who also was looking for it and he – he bought the other one off All of me right, for retail go. price. And that was the most important thing. Amazon was selling them for retail price. They better, so got, yeah, honestly. bought it for the 60 bucks Good. that I was supposed to pay for Good. it. Good, excellent. Uh, Twice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, uh, yeah, I remember when you texted me. Uh, it was, uh, it was, I was like, wow, that is that is wild. And, and now that I know this truck, what this truck, it was all NES Classics, I'm shocked there wasn't like armed guards or anything there. No, no arm guards. And you know what the funny thing is? Like nobody was like – because it wasn't like um, – Because it's L.A. All you people out yeah, there are all like too I, good for I it. Don't, I honestly don't know if enough people knew about this thing mm-hmm. that they sold out of them because like there were people all hanging out around like like just you know just people, just like customers right there that were just hanging around on the grass and everything like that. They didn't have any bags in their hands or anything like that. They were just chilling there. So mm-hmm. it's like – you know, there was no like bum rush to get them or super long line. It was all like if you knew about the treasure truck and you got the notice, you had you had to order it online. You couldn't buy it there. Yeah, you couldn't just pick up and buy it. They didn't have, they they were they didn't have like a register or anything like that where you can purchase it. You had to purchase it on Amazon. Mm-hmm. So and yeah, it was actually it was actually pretty sweet. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And, yeah, and somewhere I think if I look. In my bag of goodies that are coming to New York with me this week, <laughs> <laughs> have oh uh, look yes. at that! You, br- you well, did bring I, it. This, one, this one's not mine. This oh. is <laughs> this is this is uh this oh. is Frank Frankie, our our other NES fan. Oh, he's uh, the one that uh, bought it from you. Yep, he, yeah, he wanted. You should have jacked the price for him. Good God! <laughs> are you kidding? Why would I jack the price for? Because Frankie? he's putting that right on eBay, probably. <laughs> No, no, no. I asked him if he wanted it for himself. 
<laughs> and if it goes on eBay, if it goes on eBay, Frankie and I aren't friends anymore. <laughs> Oh, Frankie, I love you, but God, you made my life a living hell during the last episode of The Better Half, which will drop tomorrow after this podcast, and you'll know why. Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> nice. But that's nice. awesome. You know, oh, fun. yes. Oh, wow. So, that's a lot of those. All right, cool. Uh, so, yeah. So that is my NES Classic story from the Amazon truck. That is fantastic. And um, uh, what did you want to ask about the truck? that you, you It sounded like you had a gripe. Yeah, no, no, not about the truck, but you because you mentioned um, um, uh, Think Geek. So, oh, yeah. all right, so we're, like you said, we're, what, nine months out from when this thing first went on sale? Went, it went on sale uh, November of 2016. Okay, so it's like all of a sudden, and not just ThinkGeek, but I saw a lot of places, whether they were selling them as a bulk, like as a package deal, or or um, like, a, like a contest. So ThinkGeek... And and this came out of nowhere when I saw it. I texted Anthony, but by the time you got the text, by the time you saw it, I mean, it was already selling out. Think Geek all of a sudden had NES Classics for sale on their website, but now they were bundles. So, yep. like, what, now granted, they were, like, between 130 and, like, $210 each, but you got a lot of good stuff with it. So the pricing was on par for what you were getting. So you weren't just getting an NES Classic. You were getting, like, an NES Classic, then, like, a Super Mario Brothers print that also came with, like, a Super Mario Brothers mug. Or you got one with a Mega Man helmet or something like that. So, you know, the pricing was worth it for all the stuff you would have got. But, I mean, like, were these comp like, was ThinkGeek holding on to these, had to have been maybe a hundred or so, NES Classics, like, waiting for them until now? Even with, with, with Amazon, like, how all of a sudden did they get their hands on enough to fill up a truck to start selling? And not only that, but GameStop, just, I don't know, like a week ago or two weeks ago, I got an email saying, hey, if you sign up for our text messaging, you could be in the raffle to win one of 100 NES Classics. Mm. Like, all of a sudden, where are these systems coming from? You know, I'm not 100% sure. I mean, you know, what, it, what could have happened... Uh, and this is just my, my my theory is that once this thing became a craze and everybody knew that it was going to be in limited quantities, mm -hmm. that maybe they just – they specifically held on to them for different types of promotions and whatnot. But I mean if you think about it, if you look at ThinkGeek, it's like, hey, we found a box of NES Classics as if you would lose that kind of inventory. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. So, you know, and not only that, but like they were able to take full advantage of the fact of they weren't selling they weren't selling it for um uh they weren't selling it for the 60 bucks, but they were able to qualify it at a higher price by adding these other items to it. And that part doesn't bother me because the other items yeah. were actually in, were cool. Like, you know what I yeah, mean? I mean so that's they were, fun. And they were and they were all related, but, yeah. you know. Yeah, but at the same time it's like they basically made you drop at least I think it was the cheapest one was like 130 or 140 like bucks. Yeah, yeah. So you had to drop at least 130 140 bucks on their um, on their website in order to get an NES Classic. Again, not the end of the world, especially when people are charging like 250 to 300 on eBay. Yeah, and now um, you're getting more stuff. But it was just, I just found it funny that all of a sudden, like, the, these these quantities just came up out of nowhere. Again, whether it's raffles or like what you did with the Amazon truck or anything yeah. like that. Um, it would just be a weird marking. Like, you would think they just want to get, especially try and get all that money in at the end of their fiscal year. Yeah, well, and you know what? I mean, it, it could also be possible that Nintendo of America um, still has, um, you know, they still have some that they're just releasing in yeah. drips and drabs. You think? Oh, man. Uh, it, it, it wouldn't surprise me. That'd be interesting. It really wouldn't, because to be honest with you, especially with some place like Amazon, yeah. like you would think, like, however many they had in stock, they would just throw them all up online and sell mm -hmm. it. I can't imagine they would hold it back because, hey, a few months from now, we'll do this, unless... Knowing, uh, but then again, if you look at the flip side of it, if Amazon was planning this whole Amazon truck treasure truck concept, yeah. I mean, it's a great item to include for your treasure truck, and Absolutely. it's a great and talk about a you know you know a way for word to travel about how great the treasure truck is. Here's an item that so many people were trying to get a hold of that they couldn't, and now you were able to get it because the treasure truck had it. So it's yeah. it's a great PR move for them. So it's entirely possible because. A concept like that wouldn't be something they just come up with a month ago. I'm sure, like the treasure truck was probably a year or two years in development. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure any limited 
you know, limited quantity items, they just held on to for something like that. Yeah, it's it's just I found it very funny just the timing of all these different unrelated stores uh, like releasing or raffling off. Uh, a large quantity of systems, not even like one or two. Like I said, GameStop was get like had a hundred. Like you could win one of a one hundred NES classics. So it was, it, was, it was interesting. Yeah, and it could just be Nintendo. Nintendo may have just made some, they made some more, or it was the end of their production line. Had to be, yeah. Just, yeah, and they were just fulfilling orders. Wow. All know. right. Well, you know what? It's kind of bittersweet because this is it. This is the end of our any our nine month long NES classic saga. Which started um, like like we need like kind of like uh, that Sarah McLaughlin song like I will remember you playing in the background probably when we reminisce about you know the the frustration of day one where yeah just that's, that's that's a perfect every, position every website <laughs> shut down and I sat there yeah. like with puppy dog eyes <laughs> trying to get these well things. and you can you know we can just all you need to do is go back we can play I will remember you and then take clips from our show on how frustrated <laughs> exactly. we were. <laughs> Um, the song is honestly, <laughs> and then you know what? Like a month later, I, I bearing the bitter cold, five o'clock in the morning, out on on uh, Best Buy. Like I was like forty seven. I was number forty seven out of fifty six people. So I just yeah. got there in time. Well, um, I, I, in, in hindsight, now I'm happy I didn't have to do that. <laughs> and um, and then later on, having to go to jury duty and sitting there, really not even thinking about sending this guy to jail, but like, I really want to go home and play this NES classic. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's in the back of my car at a place filled with felons. <laughs> Which is awesome. <laughs> um, and then just the, the few times, what, maybe two or three opportunities? When I say opportunities, like just something that was there where you could have gotten it, but whether yep. they sold out or just something just oh, went there away. So many, there were so many moments. And even when I bought them at the treasure truck, like they were sitting in the back of my car for about five or six hours in the <laughs> trunk. And all I kept thinking was, somebody knows I have it. Somebody's break in. <laughs> Today, will be the day. Today will be the day they break into my trunk and then they're going to grab my NES classic. Like that's all I was thinking about the whole Honestly, time I was, I was working. You're right. I, don't, I was doing the exact same thing with mine. Just, it was just the paranoia of but, it all. Um, and now, it like like I said, it's sitting at home, yeah. and I'm so happy it's there, but I still haven't taken it out of the box. Play Frankie's. <laughs> I'll play Fra- uh, That's right. I'll play Frankie's in the hotel. Exactly. Frankie, I'm going to play, play your NES classic so that you can, you know, if you do sell it, it'll have to be sold used. You'll be like, you'll be like why, why, is this, why is this box ripped? Don't worry about it. That's how I got it. <laughs> don't worry about it. And every <laughs> game may be beaten already, so don't worry about it. It's all good. Uh, all right. So with that, that brings a close to uh, the NES Classic just for a month from now for a brand new saga to begin. Oh, and just and just to make a point of it, because I know you mentioned it before, we had um, – I know we had uh, our good old friend Anthony – Oh uh, yeah, Anthony online a few weeks ago, and he was talking about his frustration with the NES Classic, even though he bought one. Yes, he did. Uh, he did buy one for a markup price, and still his markup price was pretty damn good. Yeah, you're right. Um, it was, actually. It really was. Um, so uh, just because he just popped in my head as we were talking about uh, as we were talking about the NES Classic, a very, very, very happy birthday to Mr. Anthony Chu. Yes, happy birthday, my friend. In New Jersey. Yep. Uh, we hope you're enjoying your NES Classic uh, now that we all own one. Yes. <laughs> Yes, thank goodness. And um, with that, it was fun with the NES, so stay tuned for the Super Nintendo Classic Saga to begin uh, later this month. All right, and we are continuing a segment that we just started last week, a uh, mini-segment at least, called Wacky Retro Games. Wacky and... Retro! No, 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 don't do that. Um, and and um, I'm going to jump right into it. This week's Wacky Retro Game was released on the TurboGrafx-16 in March of 1992. Wow, okay. Um, TurboGrafx-16 is uh, probably a more successful um, system in Japan. And the title of said game is... Toilet Kids. <laughs> what? Oh, man. All right. That's weird. What's that all about? Okay. So Toilet Kids is a vertical shooter, very similar to games like, remember, Xevious? Oh, yeah, man. That game broke. Yeah. So vertical shooter. Right. Really cool game. So now Toilet Kids takes after that. Um, except um, Toilet Kids is about... Uh, the, 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 the game concept is about a kid, two kids who are warped into a strange and mystical world hidden inside their toilet. Is this a game based <laughs> on the Ghoulies movie? <laughs> Not at all. So our two heroes, can they fly toilet-shaped ships, <laughs> and they ha- their, their goal is to escape a world full of flying turds, but... <laughs> um, 
willies, and other porcelain thrones. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. They, um, there are four stages, uh, and halfway through the stage, and at the end of the stage, you have stage bosses. Okay. Um, there are also extra weapons that are hidden inside giant turds, <laughs> or, uh, or other ground elements like shields, rapid fire, super bombs, and so on. Um, <laughs> There is a, a special and powerful blow that can also be charged up by holding the fire button. Oh, my God. And uh, a second player can join you. It's a two-player game, so you can take control of the hero or the hero's sister, who's also a, a or heroine in the game. Um, so that is your wacky retro game for this week, Toilet Kids on the TurboGrafx-16. God help us. All right, and so uh, I figured, you know what, this week I think it's time to uh, take a trip down memory lane. And uh, we're going to go back to, well, the whole episode's going back to days of yesteryear. But let's really get into, because this past week um, I kind of became reintroduced, because it's been a long time since I played any Mega Man game. Mm -hmm. And Mega Man is one of the best games of all time, without saying. Yeah, there's no question about that. It's yeah. it's one of the best. There's and we no can... Question. Yeah. Absolutely, and we can, and I'm not talking about, and we're not talking about like, or I'm not talking about like the Mega Man X series, which is awesome, or the you know the the, the Mega Man uh, Mega Man Legend games that were on PlayStation and the N64. We're talking about OG Mega Man, the ten Mega Man games. Yes, there were ten. Remember, nine and ten came out later, but they they that are correct. part of it. Um, so what what when you think Mega Man, what's kind of the first thing that comes to your mind? Uh, oh god um how impossibly hard they are <laughs> <laughs> right ridiculous they they are some of the most difficult games ever made hands down and on normal i don't know why they have a normal or difficult setting because it just normal is ridiculous well because clearly they are you know they're just sadistic <laughs> um and of course the other thing to think about is it was so I think innovative, especially on the first game, was that you can play the game in any order with the levels. Well, yeah. to a degree. Well, to a degree, because, you know, when you play a Mega Man game, the coolest thing about it is, um, for anybody who hasn't played a Mega Man game, there are all of these bosses that have these different powers. And when you defeat the boss, you absorb their power and you can use it on different levels. Now, depending on the boss you're fighting, they are weakness is one of the other bosses powers so there was a strategy to who you wanted to defeat first because you can use their weapon to defeat another boss um you know in an easier way exactly and uh, and that's what made the game very fun you know especially back before the internet um just really trying to work out the system trying to figure out who who would be the best order to go and i remember like during the mega um the nintendo power issues like mm -hmm. one of the like Almost, like, not even a month or two after a Mega Man game came out, very quickly you saw in Nintendo Power, like, the preferred order to play the bosses. And you know what? You can learn, you can get the order ahead of time. Getting through the levels is still a whole nother ball game. That is correct. It is just so hard. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, if you were even to survive, like, the board and get to the boss, like, half the time for me, I barely had any energy to fight them. <laughs> And, um, and now the first game, of course, started with six, but then starting in Mega Man 2, there were eight, and that's what went from there. Eight uh, uh, robot masters, they were called, eight villains yep. uh, to, to defeat, and then at which point you would go to Dr. Wily's castle, or in Mega Man 4, Dr. Cossack's castle. Yep. And then you got through about four or five levels, and each game, like the game, uh, what's what I'm looking for? Not mechanics, but it was always the same thing. Eight villains... Wily's castle, and then you always had to fight the eight villains again, and then you got to Wily. Yep. So the gameplay it, was always the same. Yeah, um, and despite the fact that the gameplay was the same, like you know, the other thing that was the same was the absolute difficulty of it. Because not only, yeah, to your point, to having to fight all eight guys again before you got to Doctor Wily was just cruel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, and what was also, you know, so Mega Man, you know, we on the original NES we got Mega Man one through six. Uh, seven yep. Mega Man Seven came out on the Super Nintendo. Mega Man Eight came out on the PlayStation. Now Mega Man Eight came out, I think, in nineteen ninety eight, maybe, maybe a little after that. Okay. Um, but I'm it wasn't. You. Yeah, no, I'm trying to remember what time. No, maybe it was a little bit after that. But um, 
It wasn't until 2008 is when we finally got Mega Man 9, which came out on, at the time, the WiiWare on the Wii. And do you remember when Mega Man 9 came out? Because, like, 7 had the 16-bit graphics. Yeah, Mega, Mega, Man 8, 9 came, Mega Man 9 came out September 22nd, 2008. There we go. And Mega Man 9 went back and was one of the first games that the comp- like a company decided to take their franchise and go backwards as far yep. as graphics. It went back to 8-bit graphics. Well, you know, what looked like 8-bit graphics. Right, exactly. And that was that was officially 12 years after Mega Man 8. Because wow. Mega Man 8 came out in 96. Oh, oh, wow. All right. Even sooner. I didn't think that was soon. Okay. Yeah, so it was about 12 years later. But still, I mean, it was – at that time in 2008, though, it was kind of unheard of. For um, an 8 bit franchise, so to speak, to be, re- you know, to, to have a sequel. So, like, Mega Man to me was the first one that maybe, like, I just want to say, like, that the company saw a value in retro gaming. Absolutely. And, and again, to go back to that, because after having the 16 bit graphics and then the, the, the even souped up graphics on the PlayStation, even with those anime cutscenes, like, to go backwards and to see that 8 bit Mega Man was, I loved it when that game came out. That was fantastic. Um, but, you want to talk difficult? Like, they were sadistic with the difficulty on Mega Man 9 and Mega Man 10. Oh, man. I, I, I downloaded that, like, probably day, like first day of the yeah. first week that it came out because I was so excited. I was like, oh, man, I was like a good old-fashioned Mega Man game. This is awesome. And then 30 minutes later, damn it, I'm not playing this anymore. <laughs> this is too hard. <laughs> it was ridiculous, honestly. Um, and, of course, each Mega Man game had their – you know, you always had kind of like almost like the same type. There was always – pretty much there was always – like an ice level, there was always a a, a fire level, uh, some sort of water level, electric level. So they always kind of stuck with that. And every now and again, you had different different villains thrown in there. Um, do you remember some of your like the weird villains? Like any weird villains? Like names or like stick out? I, you know, I gotta go with um, Gutsman. I never <laughs> understood why he was called Gutsman. Yeah, that was uh, a weird. Is one. it? Is it, yeah? It was it just me? It was like because you know, like because all the other guys, like you know, Cut Man had scissors, and and Ele- Electro Man had you know electricity. They shot at you. Like, was Guts Man originally supposed to throw his guts at you? <laughs> was he sp- or was he supposed to vomit at you? <laughs> Ooh, like I never. I mean, yeah. I mean, like that's that's what the name always like. That that's where it went to me. But it was just like he was kind of like super strong or something. Like <laughs> that was his thing. Like that was his thing. And I'm like, hmm, Guts Man. I was like, I think that was one of those. You know, Japanese to English translations that just probably, didn't work out. probably. I always found weird one uh, like Dust Man. I don't know why I found that one weird. Um, well, yeah, I mean, oh my God, Killer Dust. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, Gyro what Man, or, do? or or maybe Yero Man. Uh, I guess depends on how you look at that one. Well, I mean, oh, uh, Hero Man. You mean like <laughs> you know, like you're buying a falafel or something? <laughs> he throws tzatziki sauce at you. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um. But then you had some some also like one of my favorites of all time, Metal Man. I love Metal Man. Uh, mm-hmm. A Snake Man was I just remember being so difficult. Oh, uh, Snake Man was a pain Snake Man in the was butt. the worst. Yes, um, yes, he was. And then Pharaoh Man. I don't know something about Pharaoh Man that was that was interesting. I liked his level. His was a good one. Um, but it wasn't. And now think about this. What two thousand eight? You said so. The first game came out in what eighty six, eighty seven, maybe. Um, yep. So it wasn't until 2008 until, and read into this how you want, people, um, wasn't until Mega Man 9 when we finally got a female villain, Splash Woman, made her debut in Mega Man 9. All other villains were whatever man. And then yeah, what a, Splash what a, Woman. What a, se- what a sexist series. <laughs> well, you know. Un- unacceptable. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, Mega Man 10 went back to all the, the dudes. So, um Yamato man, like what the hell's a Yamato man? Uh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> that sounds that sounds weird. <laughs> so um, let's not go there. <laughs> yeah, right. So those were and and so the t- if you can go back and play them, trust me when I tell you they're still fun. And and what made me think about all this and even pick up the Game Boy versions because the Game Boy Mega Man's are just as good as these regular as the NES ones because what was cool about the Game Boy versions were there were eight uh, eight bosses in each uh there was five game boy games but the first four took villains from the nes games but what they did was they took four from one game and then four from the game after it so like the first mega man game had four guys from mega man one four guys from mega man two Mm -hmm. and then the second mega man on game boy had the other four from two and then four from three and so on and so forth 
So oh, wow. yeah, so you kind of got to yeah, it was cool. So you got to use like Metal Man on Needle Man, which is you know kind of weird if you think about it. Um, but it wasn't until Mega Man Five, which was the first kind of like standalone Mega Man game that used. Uh, it was actually the planets were the like those were the names of the villains. Venus, Mercury, Mars, so on and so forth. Um, And that was, I mean, for a while, not so much probably today, but I remember that game was fetching a lot of money like 10 years ago or something like that. Like a ridiculous amount of money, yeah. Because it was one of the harder, yeah, it was one of the harder games to find. But then luckily they they were able to download it on the virtual console. That's how I got it. Um, No, I did have a physical copy for a little while. Um, But yeah, if you can go back and play those games, and I was telling it, you know, what kind of made me think about this was i went over my uh, my cousins the other day my godson and his little brother and they have an nes classic and they were playing mega man 2 and they got to wiley's castle which was cool but mm-hmm. you know the the villains um you know they couldn't really figure out how to defeat the bosses in wiley's castle um so you know i, I taught the boys and they're six and three um so, you know, I told him, like, look, even these villains in Wily's Castle have weaknesses. And pretty much, I'll tell you right now, like, Quick Man, that's, like, the pretty much, like, the only weapon to use throughout Wily's Castle up until he gets to Wily himself. So, uh, but I'll admit, it's been a long time since I played, so I did have to kind of really quick go back and figure out which ones <laughs> um, uh, were susceptible to what. But it just, like, it brought back so much memories that I, I feel like you're going to see from my end... A lot of Mega Man Street live streams because I really want to get through these games. Well, yeah, I mean they're they're awesome. They really are awesome games to play through. And to be perfectly honest with you, once you, um, I feel like these were the types of games where it's like once you understood the rhythm of them mm-hmm. and you got into a groove, you were able to get through them faster. Like I, I played, I think I played. I was telling you earlier before we started recording. I think I played the first four and then i stopped at the fifth one um but like after struggling through the first one the second one felt a little bit easier even though, and the second one is still my favorite in the whole series yeah but the second one felt a little easier the third one and the fourth one also felt a little easier even though they were super complicated oh absolutely absolutely and uh, you know and and i think if you think about it you know it's funny because when i was thinking about it myself i don't think the i don't think the pattern should not have been as difficult because if you let's go to Mega Man 2 let's think about it so the first boss should be Metal Man he's easiest to take care of with your regular weapon right then from Metal Man you go to Wood Man because metal cuts wood so then that takes care of Wood Man in like four shots then you go from Wood Man to Air Man all right I don't know where that one goes but like like heat and and ice usually those guys are parallel to each other um you know, heat and water, or water and heat, with Bubble Man and Heat Man. So I guess there is a little bit of a, uh, like, rocks, paper, scissor to it. A, d- a little bit, but then there were some that didn't make sense at all, and it was like, it, some of them you were just kind of, like, stuck with a guessing game. That's true. Like, when you get to Mega Man 9, like, Galaxy Man, like, what? What does he even do? <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, yeah, he, he, he controls the galaxy, <laughs> and he, gets, he throws planets at you. Oh, man. Or uh, Mega yeah. Man 10, Strike Man. You know, uh, bowling or something. But be careful of Pump Man in Mega Man 10. That one's oh, not for whoa, the kids. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I don't want to go anywhere near anybody named Pump Man. <laughs> so, uh, no, we have, thank you. Will we ever get a Mega Man 11? Probably not. I think we're good with 10 Mega Mans, at least as OG Mega Man. And, you, don't um, think, you don't think they'll come out with an 11? Eh, I don't think so. I think they're good. Well, they, they just came out with the Mega Man, what they do? The Mega Man, uh, like, anniversary series, which mm-hmm. I think was the first 10 Mega Mans on one disc. Now yes. I think they're doing one. They're doing one with uh, I think Mega Man X now. Oh really? Yeah, that's cool. I would you know though I never played the uh, Mega Man X series, so I would be really uh, interested in trying that out. Well, Mega Man X will be on the Super Nintendo Classic, luckily, and uh, Mega Man X was a fun upgrade to the regular Mega Man series. It had that 16-bit to it. Um, you know the the bosses were more intricate. Um, mm-hmm. They weren't just like Snake Man, Top Man. They were like actual full names it was pretty interesting oh cool so uh but yeah i just wanted kind of you know nice reminisce of uh of uh screaming and yelling at the television many times because of the uh-huh. unnecessary difficulty level of Mega Man. but if you can go download it on the virtual console they're all available and nine and ten you can get on uh we um xbox uh, xbox playstation on all of it so definitely when you get a chance check it out <laughs> We're here this Saturday, and Sunday for that matter, 
Long Island Retro Gaming Expo 2017. And we've been talking about this for a while, but it's finally upon us. I know. I mean, who knew it was actually going to happen? <laughs> I think the people at the Cradle of Aviation did. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, then I guess it's all right. So, uh, and you can get your, remember, folks, get your tickets in advance. Save five bucks and use that five dollars to buy a five dollar video game when you're there. Um, and they do exist. Yes, they do. Oh, boy, do they. Tickets. Expo.liretro.com slash tickets. Remember, single day, $20 for adults, $10 for children, two-day pass. That's Saturday and Sunday, if you're counting. $30 adults, $15 for children. This $5 advance ticket goes, ends, I should say, midnight, August 11th, Eastern Standard Time. Otherwise, you're paying $5 more at the door. And we talked about it last time. They got a Retrothon, tournaments. They're having a... Uh, street Pass game show, which almost looks like a street, like a retro version of the Family Feud. I think that oh, seems I interesting. Play, I want to play that. We'll check it did out. We, did we get to play? I, I don't know. I hope so. Uh, a Link Cable Lounge. So if anyone has old school Game Boys and want to play two player games, get the Game Link cable with you, and you just sit there and play. You can also bring your Switch and do it as well. Uh, or you can just buy a Game Boy while you're there. You can <laughs> retro and chill at night. This is going to be their Saturday night. When all the tournaments end, they're going to have free play, uh, you know, arcades, 80s karaoke. Oh, it's got a cash bar. Oh, oh game on. Oh, man, that's trouble. And uh, most importantly, the retro gamers are going to be there. Me and Ant will be broadcasting live throughout the day. But more importantly, Ant, we're going to go live on Facebook with our official podcast at 1 p.m. Eastern. That's right, 1 p.m. Eastern. You can hear us. Uh, you can you, well, you can watch us actually. You can watch us on Facebook, and uh, if you miss that, you can always uh, listen to our podcast on a usual Tuesday. It will drop that following Tuesday. That's correct. And all of our friends who are going to be there, yes, get your tickets and be there. We'll be on the podcast. Whoever wants, just walking around, wants to be on the show, will be able to come on the show. So tune in this Saturday, 1 p.m. Eastern, at Facebook.com/slash Retro Gamers Podcast. And it's going to be a blast. Long Island Retro Gaming Expo 2017. All right, and it's uh, it's that time of our it's well it's that time of our podcast actually <laughs> where uh, we usually segue into a retro spotlight. Now I know last week I don't think we did we do a retro spotlight last uh, week. No, we took off last week. We took off last week. Yeah, we took we we took off last week because uh, we had we had other fish to fry <laughs> um, retro wise. But um, I thought uh, this would be a great week to return to retro spotlight. Speci- what, what do you have something to say? This is the first like. one in like two or three weeks actually. Yeah, but there was a little bit of a gap because yeah. I think we had a retro reject before that, yeah. um, and uh, that's, that was a great one. If you did not hear the <laughs> last retro reject we had, please go back to episode 50 – was that 52? Two. Yep. Uh, go back to episode 52 where we definitely cover uh, <laughs> one really <laughs> unique and reviled game. Um, Which I'm anyway. going to try and find and purchase at the expo. Oh, awesome. Yeah, we need to make a list for the we expo, do. by the we way. Really we do. need to make a hit list of we games do that, that we want to get. Um, <laughs> But anyway, so this week, um, uh, our retro spotlight is uh, – well, it's, I'm calling it out specifically because it's also, it's also going to be in This Week in Gaming. Um, oh. It is uh, celebrating a 30 uh, – this will be its 32nd – no, wow. uh, 22nd. I'm oh. sorry, 22nd. 22nd anniversary. Oh, still. I'm sorry. My, my mental math. No, but still. still. Uh, 22 years ago, this game came out. So, And it's one of my favorite, if not my favorite – one of my favorite RPGs of all time. It's probably the only RPG, um, one of very few RPGs, to say, one of maybe two RPGs that rivals the uh, Legend of Zelda series. For wow. Me. Um, even though Zelda's kind of action-adventure RPG, still, mm-hmm. um, uh, this game rivals that. Uh, and, it's, and it's frequently listed as one of the greatest games of all time, period. Um, so this week's Retro Spotlight, I'm going to take you down memory lane to <laughs> uh, discuss and talk about, oh, or just, you know, Tell you about Chrono Trigger for uh, the Super Nintendo. All right. So Chrono Trigger was developed and published by Square, which uh, some people know now as Square Enix. Uh, they're most well known for their Final Fantasy franchise, mm-hmm. um, which is uh, released. I don't know. Uh, at this point, I think we're at Final Fantasy 15. I think officially. so. Right? Yeah, we're at Final Fantasy 15. Chrono Trigger. Um, was released way back when in 1995. Uh, it was originally released. Uh, it was released on the Super Nintendo console originally, uh, ma- uh, March 11th, 1995, in Japan. Okay. And then five months to the day later, on August 11th, 1995, in the U.S. Oh wow! 
Um, and then since its initial release, it's been ported to other systems. In 1999, it was released on the uh, PlayStation. Uh, it was it was released on the Nintendo DS, the iOS, Android, and on the Wii Virtual Console. Yeah, I remember. So, uh, I think it came like in a hybrid disc on the PlayStation, didn't it? Chrono Trigger. Yeah, on the play on the PlayStation, it came with Final Fantasy IV, I, I believe, so, yeah. as part of the Final Fantasy Chronicles. Yep, yep. Um, <clears throat> PlayStation disc. So. Um, but you know, ex- um, absolutely one of my, uh, it goes on my, one of my, my lists. I've never really done a top 10 list in terms of greatest games I've played, you know, greatest games of all time, according to me in terms of ones I've played, <laughs> but this one definitely would be on that list. No question about okay. it. So for those of you who don't know what Chrono Trigger is, um, Chrono Trigger is, um, it's an RPG game that takes place in a world similar to earth. Um, so it's an earth like world where um, primitive humans and dinosaurs actually shared the Earth in the prehistoric age. Oh, wow. um, and then uh, it took place uh, – th- there's time travel involved in this game. So there are, there are several different eras that you travel through. The first one is that prehistoric age with humans and dinosaurs sharing the Earth. Then you have the Middle Ages, which has knights and magic and monsters and all kinds of stuff. Um, which is where you start your story with your hero. Um, and then they have the post-apocalyptic future where, you know, humans and robots are actually struggling to survive. <laughs> um, so the um, – and then the, the general story is your hero – um, whose name is Chrono. Oh. Um, big surprise. Um, but you're basically traveling through these three different time periods, um, ultimately trying to destroy the you know the ultimate evil villain in the series, who is trying to bring about the apocalypse. And you'll oh, you ultimately face off against him at the end of time. That's wow. actually the last era that you play through is the end of time wow i didn't realize it was so time travel based wow it's very heavily time travel yeah. based yep huh. so um so the story starts uh you know the story starts in 1000 a.d which would be like the you know what you would consider the middle ages mm-hmm. with with chrono and two companions and then ultimately as you play throughout the game um you will have up there are up to six uh there are six characters that you can play with. So you start with three, you get three more along the way, um, and you find them. You find them in in some of the different eras, mm-hmm. which is really cool. Um, so the game was actually originally conceived in 1992, oh. um, and it was conceived by because it was Square. It was conceived by the producer and creator of the Final Fantasy series, uh, and I'm going to butcher his name, but yeah, Hir- Hironobu Sakaguchi. Hey, oh, listen, all those uh, trips to Japan are paying off. Yep. So um, it was it was conceived by him, and then um, also who came on board with that was um, the director and the creator of the Dragon Quest series, which is another big series, mm-hmm. um, Yuji Horii. Okay. <laughs> and Much last but not least, the creator of the Dragon Ball comic series, which you know, which everybody knows, Dragon Ball Z and stuff like that. So the original comic series, Dragon Ball. Um, that creator, Akira Toriyama. Hmm. So those three guys are actually responsible for. Um, the concept behind Chrono Trigger. And then what's interesting is that the way that they came up with it, because what happened was um, the Final Fantasy series creator, Sakaguchi, he went on a trip with um, Yuji Horii um, to, uh, and uh, Akira Toriyama. They went, to, they went on a trip to America to do some research on game design. Okay. While they were in America, they were so impressed by – all the different like types of game design that they saw that they realized that they wanted to create something brand new. And out of that trip came the concept for Chrono Trigger. Oh, wow. Okay. So, yep. So 1992 is when they went on this trip and came up with the idea. Um, they were hoping originally to release it on the super Famicom disc drive. Nintendo was planning a disk drive attachment for the Super Famicom, also known as the Super Nintendo. Mm-hmm. And we know that for the original Nintendo, they had a disk drive in Japan that never got released in the U.S. Mm-hmm. So they were planning the same thing on the Super Famicom disk drive. However, Nintendo ultimately decided not to move forward with that disk drive. So once that happened, they realized they needed to just work on releasing it for the Super Famicom itself. Okay. Okay. So... Um, 
because the story was um, so involved with time travel, and I say it like when you play this game, you're constantly traveling back and forth through time, wow. oh, which is which is awesome. Um, so, be, but because there was so much, uh, because the story was so rich and deep in terms of time travel, that um, they actually had um, me- regular series of meetings, just in terms to, of the story, to ensure continuity. And they had as many as 30 employees sitting in a room to discuss the story elements of the game to make sure that the game had full continuity. Wow. So they wanted to make sure like, you know, things that were happening in the past weren't going to affect what happened in oh. 1000 AD, what happened in the like post-apocalypse. A, yeah. Like a butterfly effect almost. Exactly. Wow. So they wanted, to, they wanted to ensure that things that happened in certain parts of the series didn't affect <clears throat> the other story beats. Mm-hmm. So – and the game itself is like you know the story is so massive that you can just uh, I mean the, the, how complicated it must have been to just sit there and go over well we can't have that happen because it's gonna you know cause and effect is gonna do this yeah. and so on and so forth so super super complicated game to put together um, uh, so and then um, the graphics one of the graphics programmers for the game or the graphics programmer for the game whose name is Yas. Yasuhika Kamada. There you go. He, he actually cited Ridley Scott's visual work in the film Alien as his inspiration for the lighting techniques he wow. used in the video game. So when you see the lighting techniques in the game, you can see that it has some kind of darker elements to it, and like there's some shadow work at play and whatnot. And you can actually thank Ridley Scott's Alien for that <laughs> in the Chrono Trigger game. Sweet. Boy, that, okay. that Alien's really, uh, really been a basis a small basis for a lot of games that contra it's pretty cool yep oh yeah no absolutely um alien well you know alien was uh, one of the most influential you know sci-fi horror films of our time so okay um now gameplay aside i'm gonna gonna talk quite a bit about the music of the game because the music of the game is actually one of the most um well-known aspects of the game because the music in it is absolutely stunning so Chrono Trigger was scored um, mostly by Yasunori Mitsuda. Mm-hmm. Um, he had, there were a couple of other composers who helped out, and I'll get to them in a bit. Um, but Mitsuda was the one who did most of the, most of the songs at, or most of the music. Now, each tune that he wrote for the game was around two minutes long, oh, wow. which, is, which, is pretty, which is pretty lengthy for, um, for a 16-bit game. Yeah, honestly. So each, each song would go about two minutes before, they would, before it would repeat. Because you know games in the you know in those uh, on those systems naturally repeat, mm-hmm. um, and he um, he worked on so many. Uh, he wound up working on what ultimately came out to three discs worth of music. Oh wow! Um, for this game, um, and actually at one point during the game, um, uh, during the during the composing, he suffered a hard drive crash that lost around forty tracks oh, that were man. in progress, and he had to start over. No. Oh, that sucks. I know. And then to make matters worse, um, Mitsuda was so focused on working on the um, soundtrack for this game. He worked so hard on the project. He actually developed severe stomach ulcers from composing the game. And he was forced to take a break (laughs) from the game for his own health. And as a result of that, they they brought in Final Fantasy composer Nobuo Uematsu to finish composing the tracks for him oh, because he man. could not physically complete them <laughs> phys- or physically complete the game. He did most of them, but he couldn't yeah. do all of them. Wow. Yep. That's wild. Which is absolutely insane. <laughs> um, and then, like I said, the music from the game is ridiculously popular. Um, fans have remixed the soundtrack, producing over 700 different tributes and cover performances of the soundtrack. Holy cow. Um, and then some of the music from Chrono Trigger was actually part – I don't know if you remember that there was a traveling symphony back in the mid-2000s. It was called Play, a video game symphony, and it traveled, oh, around, yeah. it, it traveled around playing tracks from different video games. Mm-hmm. Um, Chrono Trigger was uh, – some of the Chrono Trigger music was um, some of the music that they played. And that, that, um, that concert went from 2006 to 2010. Wow. Uh, what else can I tell you about Chrono Trigger? It used a 32 megabit ROM cartridge with a battery-backed RAM for saved games. And okay. 32 megabits back then was nothing to sneeze at. Yeah, right. Um, 
So, you know, especially talking about a 16-bit game on a 32-megabit uh, cartridge. Pretty pretty big. Yep. Um, some statistics for the game. It is the It was the third best-selling game of 1995 when cool. it was released. Um, the only two games that sold more than it were uh, Donkey Kong Country 2 <laughs> and Dragon Quest 6. Oh, wow. And in fact, um, so it sold um, 2.3 million units on the Super Nintendo. Two million of those units were sold in Japan. So only oh, really? 300,000 were sold in the U.S. Wow. And then on top of that, though, the almost all of those two million that were sold, sold in the first two months of the game's release. Oh, oh man. Japanese like their uh, role-playing games. Uh, absolutely. Um, also, some extra releases actually came out for Chrono Trigger um, on the Satellaview. Now, we talked about the Satellaview um, briefly at one point in time. The Satellaview was a modem attachment to the Super Famicom oh, yeah. in Japan. Uh, remember, we talked about it for the original Famicom. Yep, it yep. had a modem attachment. So the Super Famicom also had a modem attachment, and it was called the Satellaview. If you had the Satellaview, you were able to download three um, three add-ons to Chrono Trigger. One was called Chrono Trigger Jet Spike Special, which was a racing game on jet bikes. That the, <laughs> uh, and that was a uh, and uh, that was one story point in the game. Cool. Um, and then you could also download the Chrono Trigger Character Library, mm -hmm. which had oh. a full list of all the characters, and then the Chrono Trigger Music Library, which carried all of the music. That's cool. In addition to that, in 1996, on the Satellaview, they released a game called Radical Dreamers, which had, which included, which was a side story in the Chrono Trigger series. Because the Chrono Trigger, you know, you, had, it, you know, for an RPG, it has one main story, but then there were side quests that were going on. So Radical Dreamers was a short text-based game relying on minimal graphics and atmospheric music, which was only released in Japan, and it was a side story of Chrono Trigger. Hmm. Um. So, uh, and that was the Satellaview um, stuff. Uh, some awards. The, the game. The game has always been awarded a ton of stuff, or it winds up on a lot of lists. So, the e the Electronic Gaming's Monthly Video Game Awards of 1995 mm -hmm. named Chrono Trigger Best Role Playing Game, Best Music in a Cartridge Based Game, and Best Super Nintendo Game of the Year. There you go. Um, game rankings, um, it was the uh, listed as the second highest scoring RPG on the Super Nintendo. Cool. Um, also rated the 24th highest RPG of all time. Oh, wow. Um, the Guinness Book of World Records in 2009, I believe, um, listed Chrono Trigger as the 32nd most influential game of all time. Really? Um, Nintendo Power listed... Chrono Trigger as having one of the greatest endings ever in Nintendo history. I did it really. And you're talking one of twelve different endings you can get in the game. There are twelve oh different endings in this game that you God. can get. Enough with these multiple endings. That's why I know. Um, IGN has listed it on its top 100 games of all time for about ten years now, at really? least ten years, and it's been listed as high as fourth. Oh wow. Um, it's made the GameSpot Top 100 list multiple times. Um, Nintendo Power's 20th anniversary issue listed it as the fifth best SNES game to ever be created. Wow, all right. And ga under, on Games Radar, Games Radar 100 Best Games of All Time, it is first place for the best Japanese role-playing game ever. And it is second as the best Super Nintendo game behind Super Metroid. <laughs> A uh, few other things to throw at you. It was the uh, I just mentioned that the the game has multiple endings. Mm -hmm. It was the first game ever to have multiple endings. Really? Yes. Chrono Trigger is the first game to list multiple endings uh, to to give you an option of having multiple endings in a game. Um, it was also the first game to have what's called New Game Plus mode. Have yeah. you ever heard of New Game Plus mode? No. Okay. So what New Game Plus mode is? So when Chrono Trigger, when you completed the game. And you wanted to replay the game. Okay. Uh, when you replayed the game, all of your weapons, skills, and experience were at the same level as oh. when you finished the game previously. They carried over. Nice. Every, everything carried over to a um, new game. That was what Very new game nice. plus mode is. Um, a question. I just want to go back. I mean, how, yeah. how is this? Well, I guess because the Super Famicom. I was saying like, like Castlevania 2 had multiple endings. So I was wondering how Chrono Trigger could be the first game with multiple endings. Oh, I'm not sure. That, that's what they have listed for it. Hmm. Castlevania, 
That's true. Castlevania Two did have. I wonder if um, I wonder if it's the first RPG to have multiple. That endings. could be the case. It might be that. Or have so many multiple endings. That's weird. All right. Well, that's... yeah, which is crazy. Um, a couple of other things to throw out there is um, the English translation for this game. Now, this was a massive, massive game. Mm-hmm. Um, the English translation was done in thirty days. Really? Yes. They gave huh. them one month to translate the whole game. Oh gosh! And because it was being translated into um, English, when they were porting the game over to uh, the U.S., they did have to cut some things out of the game or make adjustments because there were some adult-oriented <laughs> I- things going on in the game. Always. Um, so, for example, there were any instances of alcohol had to be removed. Oh my god! So, in the American game, there's a scene where. Um, Chrono gets into a soup drinking contest with another <laughs> character. In the Japanese game, it's not soup. <laughs> yep. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, there was a, and then um, in, uh, uh, and then one other thing, um, one other fun fact in the game, and this is a this is a story beat. So spoilers if you haven't played this Uh-oh. game, but All right. but it's also it's also twenty two years old. So too bad. <laughs> um, but um, this was one of the first games in which the main character dies during the quest. Wow! Like purposely supposed to. Yes, he's purposely <laughs> he purposely dies during the quest. Now, in the original version of the game, uh, or the original story of the game, Chrono was supposed to die and. The, the original one you play with is supposed to die and stay dead. Okay. Oh, man. But they thought it was going to be too depressing, so they, they put in a story beat, obviously, where they find a way to bring him back to life. <laughs> but originally, the main character was supposed to die at some wow. point in the game and stay dead. Ah, that that would have been Which wild. Really yeah, right? Yep. Um... The game did have a sequel, a uh, legitimate sequel, which Chrono was called Cross. Chrono Cross, yep. released on PlayStation, which I have sitting at home in shrink wrap, and I cannot – I just don't know why I haven't played it yet because I'm stupid. Um, I need to play that. Um, <laughs> no. And that was the only true sequel for the Chrono Trigger series. You have Chrono Trigger, you have Chrono Cross. You do not have any other wow, games. only two games. All officially right. in the series. <laughs> in 2001, Square trademarked the, the – the uh, title Chrono Break, hmm. which led to speculation that they were going to come out with another game in the series, but that just never that never happened. Hmm. So the only two games in the series are Chrono Trigger and Chrono Cross, which, like I said, I find very interesting considering how successful and revered Chrono Trigger is. You would think that this would have become like a Final Fantasy where you would just get a whole bunch of Chrono Trigger oh, uh, sequels. But uh, alas, that was not meant to be, and <laughs> there is um, there is no indication that they ever plan on going back to the Chrono Trigger series. Oh, man. But that's okay, because if you have never played Chrono Trigger, anybody who's listening, I urge you to pick it up and play through it. You will not be disappointed. It is one of the best games you will ever play. Uh, and that is this week's Retro Spotlight on Chrono Trigger. All right, so coming off that tremendous uh, Retro Spotlight, which is actually going to get me to go out and play this game, uh, we're going to introduce a Cheat of the Week. And this Cheat of the Week is brought to you by Chrono Trigger, in which case... If you get to the point, this is how you're going to save Lucia's mother. I'm not going to tell you Luca, at what point. Luca. I have to play the game first, I guess, to save Luca's Luca's mother. mother. Here's how you save Luca's mother. In the event where Luca's mother gets caught in the machine, you want to walk to the lower, rightmost accessible portion of the machine. You press A, and you're going to be prompted to enter the following code to stop it. The code is left A, right A. Can't get more simpler. Left A, right A, to save Lucia's mother. Yeah, and if you don't want to save Lucia's mother, you don't have to put the code in. You can just watch her die. That's even better. So check it out. That's this week's Cheat of the Week. And this week in gaming! What do we got, bro? All right. Well, you know, every time I hear that intro, uh, my ears bleed just a little. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I got to warn you to lower the headphones on that one. Yeah, I, you really do when, when you play that thing. I mean, that, that that's enough to break somebody out of a coma. <laughs> All right, so uh, this week in gaming history, we are going to start um, all the way back. We're going to go to 1981, and now this is interesting. Okay. 1981, this week, um, was the introduction of DOS for the PC. Really? For the wow. first time ever. And it included a game on DOS called Donkey. 
<laughs> wasn't quite Kong, just Donkey. Donkey. Uh, it was it was called Donkey, and it was a uh, it was a top it was a top view racing game where you're racing down a street of two lanes, and in one lane a donkey would show up, and your job <laughs> was to avoid the donkey, avoid running over the donkey. Donkey. Oh, that's funny. So, uh, yeah, but still, 1981 this week in uh, gaming history, I, uh, we got DOS. I didn't think DOS was DOS that was old. Invent- I thought yeah, he was younger Don, than that. Yeah, right. DOS is 36 years old, yeah, my man. friend. Happy 36th birthday, DOS. <laughs> um, Going to jump a few years to 1985. Okay. Uh, we got the Game & Watch widescreen <laughs> version of Tropical Fish. Ooh, all right. I don't think I've ever played that one. I never played that one either. You know, it's funny. Last week, uh, real quick, when we mentioned all the Game & Watches, I broke out the two that I have on the DS. So I was yeah. playing – I played like Oil Panic for like 30 minutes, which is very yeah. repetitive. <laughs> I was going to say that, that. That's a little insane. Oh, it was nuts. But so be it. Uh, to, we're going to 1986 on the Famicom Disk System that okay. was only released in Japan. Metroid. Oh, nice. Yep. Metroid was released on the Sweet. Disk System there. We got it on the NES. We did. 1987 on the Famicom in Japan, Rad Racer. Oh, I love that game. Of course. Uh, it was part of the Nintendo World Championships, and it was part of the sequence in The Wizard when we got to say hello to the Power Glove. Oh, Lucas, damn you and your Power Glove and whatnot. And love the Power Glove. And it's so rad. Wooing eyes. So what's his Rad name? Racer. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> uh, jumping to 1988 on the Famicom, we got Bases Loaded 2, second season, nice. which was my favorite baseball game. That was a good time. one, yeah. That was a very good yeah, game. Yeah, I, lo- I love Bases Loaded 2. There was something about it that was just awesome. Mm-hmm. Okay. 1989 on the PC-98. Okay. We got Can Can Bunny. Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Yep, so Can Can Bunny was uh, based off of uh, adult manga series. Oh, never mind. All right. <laughs> or adult novel, manga novel <laughs> series, um, which which I thought was interesting. So, um, I would have thought it was based know, on Campbell's Soup. Yeah, you know, they're, they're, I, you know, I pulled up some images on this is – um, and it's quite interesting. What a, in, you know, introducing the girls. Uh, <laughs> the fairy with bunny ears. Um, let's see. Uh, 20 is considered old enough for hentai games, right? Oh, hey now. I think uh, so. So Can Can Bunny in 1989. <laughs> All right. Check it out, folks, with your parents' permission. Wowee. Um, 1990 in Japan, we got Romance of the Three Kingdoms 2. Okay. On the Sharp X sixty eight thousand, cha ching. We are looking for that at the expo. I, you know, I have a feeling they won't have it there. But you know what? You, <laughs> you never, never know. know. You never know in this town. Wait, which <laughs> town? Not in my town. I'm in Orlando right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in, in Garden your City, town. Who knows? In your town. <laughs> um, nineteen ninety one on the Sega Genesis in the U S. We got a game called Populous. I don't know if you remember. Oh, okay, that game. yeah, I remember that game. Yeah, it was kind of Sim City esque. It was. It was very yeah. yeah. Populous. Uh, 1992 on the Sega CD mm. in Japan, uh, Prince of Persia. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, Prince of Persia has been around a lot longer, I think, than people realize. Because I think the like the PlayStation one was the one that it really where it really broke out, mm-hmm. I think. But it's been around since the 80s. It's been, yeah, it's been around for a while. Yeah, I mean, it's yeah. Been, yeah, it's been since the 80s. Uh, 1993 on the uh, Super Famicom in Japan, Secret of Mana. Oh, nice. Which will be released on the soon-to-be-released uh, Super Nintendo Classic. That is true. Or the SNES Classic. Nope. <laughs> yep. SNES Classic, everyone. Uh, 1994, on the 3DO in Japan, we got Lemmings. Oh, nice. I love that game. I used to love that. Yeah. Moving on to 1995, as mentioned in our retro spotlight for Super Nintendo in the U.S., we got Chrono Trigger, nice. a game... A game you will be playing very soon. I really am. I, you got me so jacked for that during that retro spotlight. I want you to play it, and I want to. I want to get your thoughts on it because I'm telling you, man. Uh, I just like that game. Just like 
blew my mind in places. It really did. It was awesome. Uh, 1996. uh, This is fitting considering, you know, we're doing a wrestling-themed streaming month. So in 1996 on the Sega Saturn in Japan, uh, WWF WrestleMania, the arcade game. Oh. (laughs) Probably not one of the best. No, but it was fun. It was different. Uh, 1997 um, on the Macintosh. Hmm. We got the sequel to one of my favorite games of all time. Um, this is the the 11th hour, the sequel oh. to The Seventh Guest. One of your favorites. Oh, man. Seventh Guest is by far one of my favorite games of all time. The 11th hour, not as much. <laughs> um, but still good. Okay. I, I still played through it. And I still play through it every once in a while. Cool. Uh, jumping to 1998, on the Nintendo 64, we got WWF Warzone. Oh, wow. Nice. That's a good one. That, that was the start of a yeah. great series. Because uh, in 1999 on the PlayStation, uh, we got WWF Attitude, which <laughs> did every which did everything that WWF Warzone did and then multiplied it by like 50. Oh, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, totally. Fantastic. That, that game had so many superstars in it. The it cut was awesome. cutscenes, too, were awesome. Yeah, the cutscenes were yep. great. Uh, jumping to 2000 on the Dreamcast in the U.S., we got a game called Seaman. Do you remember the game, Seaman? Yes, I do. <laughs> no. And it's a legit game, people. It it's is a legit, a legit game. game. It, was, it was like a Pokemon game, except you were you were raising a fish in the ocean that had a human face. A very creepy human face. Yes. Seaman. And, and you talked to it. There was a mic attachment. Yes, there right was a mic it. so you can talk to it. Really strange, really creepy. Seaman for the Dreamcast. And a very funny... Angry Video Game Nerd episode with Seaman, too. Check it out. Oh, yes, that's right. Yeah. I remember that one. Uh, moving on to 2001 on the Game Boy Color in the U.S., we got WWF Betrayal. Oh, yes. That was a, uh, that was they not actually, a good game. No, no. They tried making it like an actual like side-scroller. Like It wasn't wrestling. Like I forgot. So I think someone kidnapped Stephanie and you had to go rescue him or something like that. It was, it was, yeah. it was rough. Needless to say, just leave her kidnapped. The game was yeah. not good. <laughs> Uh, jumping to 2002, um, on the Atari 2600. What? Okay. Uh, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. <laughs> oh, man, Disney. What took you so long? <laughs> they were catching up. <laughs> um, 2003, on the PlayStation 2, we got Chaos Legion. Why does that sound familiar? Okay. Uh, it was it was a fairly popular game. I can't remember exactly what it was. Yeah. Um so and then also I'll just share for 2003 Xbox and PS2 got Futurama because I know you're a Futurama. Ah <laughs> yes. Do you have that game? I think I had it. I don't have it anymore. Well, okay. I may still have it. I don't know. I, I definitely still have it because when I worked at Fox, I found it in a closet. Oh, did you? <laughs> I found it in the video game closet. We had a video game closet with just all of our games in there, and I was looking. And I was like, wow. I was like, I didn't know we had a Futurama game, and and one of my coworkers was like, yeah. He's like, you want it? And I'm like, yeah. He gave it to me. <laughs> nice. I yep. love Futurama. Uh, jumping to 2004, uh, on the Game Boy Advance, Shining Force, Resurrection of the Dark Dragon. Oh, that was, I mean, it was it was a port of of this of Shining Force, but I remember getting that, and I it just played through that game again at that point. Oh, that game was fantastic. Yeah, I love Shining Force. And uh, last but not least for uh, This Week in Gaming, in 2005, on the PlayStation 2, the Xbox, and the GameCube, we got Madden NFL 06. Nice. Good old that Madden. Is, uh, yeah, that is this week in gaming, and that is this week as well. And well, I'll uh, I'll be seeing you very soon, as I next so. week we'll be from the uh, Long Island Retro Gaming Expo 2017. I'd feel more confident about it if I actually had a flight booked. <laughs> what? <laughs> so. I don't know. I don't know when I'm leaving Orlando. Okay, well, folks, that's going to be interesting, as I just learned this right now. <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, I, w- I was supposed to leave Orlando on Friday, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> oh, that's true, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, uh, yes, you – no, you will see me for the expo because I've already said that my cutoff here is Thursday. On oh, okay. Thursday, I have to fly to New York. <laughs> There's no question about that. So um, I will be there. Um, Lord knows how I'm going to be flying, but, <laughs> but uh, I, will be, I, w- I will be there. <laughs> or hop in that rental and just drive. Yeah, take a train. Trust me, there are many ways for me to get there. <laughs> Uh, cool. Well, that's going to be so much fun next week. So, yeah, be, again, get your tickets. Just expo.laretro.com slash tickets. I'll post the link. 
And with track it. us down if you get there. Honestly, do. And follow us. Honestly, the the, the doors open at 10 o'clock. So really, anytime between 10 and 1, we, me and Anthony are going to be randomly streaming, just walking around, seeing what we're interested in, what we're going to buy. I feel like a lot of our buying is going to happen like between 10 and 10.05. And then after yeah, so that... Basically, we, basically, by the time we record, we're just going to be showing off what we bought. Th- that sounds good to me. Uh, hopefully, a lot of our friends will be there. And then 1 o'clock, we will go even bigger with the live stream um, where we do our live podcast. Podcast. That's going to be a blast. And then we'll see what happens afterwards. You know, maybe keep walking around. Um, anything off the top of your head you, you're trying to look for? Because I'm looking for a virtual boy. I don't care what you say. That's okay, because before you get to the convention, <laughs> I'm going to walk around with these <laughs> little flyers that say, do not sell virtual boy to this man. <laughs> and it's going to have your picture right on it. <laughs> <laughs> like a picture of Al Bundy. Don't take checks from this man. <laughs> exactly. Do not sell a virtual boy to this boy. <laughs> oh, how could you? Oh, I can't wait to get my... And I'll you, bring... are not, you are not allowed to buy a virtual and boy I will in my presence. Bring, We've already established this. Bring the games I still have. I'll bring them with me so that way we can play right then and there. Oh, that's awesome because you know what? I'll make sure that I have a really good steel-toed boot. <laughs> oh, how dare you? And I will finally put those games out of their misery. <laughs> Hashtag VB sucks. Oh, my God. S-U-X. So with that, folks, we'll catch you live this Saturday on Facebook.com slash Retro Gamers Podcast for the live Retro Gamers live stream. Oh, and just a heads up, you asked a question. What am I looking for? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> after all this discussion this week, I'm going to be looking for a nice, pristine copy of Chrono Trigger. Nice. All right. We're going to look out for that. And, um, you know, if you're there, if you're at the show, come find us. Share with us what you're looking for, what you're buying. Follow us on Instagram at the underscore retro gamers, uh, the retro And of course, hit subscribe everywhere. YouTube. For now, we're trying to get a YouTube page up, but for now, you can go because my page finally got enough people. I have a custom URL for my private YouTube page. Oh, you're growing Not up. Not private, personal. So. If you go to YouTube.com slash C. Yeah, your, pri- your, your private YouTube page is not suitable. No, for you don't want that one. Um, so YouTube.com slash C slash more 365. I don't know why the C's in there, but it's in there. If you go there, you'll find all our podcasts for the Retro Gamers amongst Pro Slam World Podcast and the better half. And um, Cheap plug. Of course. And, of course, follow us on iTunes, Spreaker, iHeartRadio. Subscribe to any or all of them. You'll get new episodes each and every week. And enjoy Florida. I'll see you in a few days. All right. See you soon. Peace. Peace.